21st Precinct, Sergeant Waters. Uh, wait a minute, lady. Talk slower. I can't understand you. A man in the hall? What's he doing there? Yeah? Yeah? Was he drunk? You are in the muster room at the 21st Precinct, the nerve center. A call is coming through. You will follow the action taken pursuant to that call from this minute until the final report is written in the 124 room at the 21st Precinct. All right. I'll send an officer over right away. Well, don't worry about it. He'll be there right away. He'll take care of it. Yes, ma'am. 21st Precinct. It's just lines on a map of the city of New York. Most of the 173,000 people wedged into the nine-tenths of a square mile between Fifth Avenue and the East River wouldn't know if you asked them that they lived or worked in the 21st. Whether they know it or not, the security of their homes, their persons, and their property is the job of the men of the 21st Precinct. The 21st, 160 patrolmen, 11 sergeants, and four lieutenants of whom I'm the boss. My name is Kennelly, Frank Kennelly. I'm captain in command of the 21st. I was working my night tour, 4 p.m. to 8 a.m. It had been a quiet night in the precinct, and after I turned out the platoon for the 12 to 8, as superior officer on duty in the division during the night, I was called to the 23rd precinct to supervise the patrol force on duty at a three-alarm fire near the approach to the Triborough Bridge. I was still out of the precinct at 2.10 a.m. when patrolman William F. Coley, assigned to post number four, approached a call box on York Avenue to make his hourly ring. Patrolman Coley, Box 31. Hold on a second, Coley. I've got something for you. Yes, sir. Listen. Walk around the 341 there. Yeah. A party named Heel has called in. There's a drunk sleeping in the hallway. Okay, Sergeant. When you get it cleaned up, ring in again. You'll take your meal. Yes, sir. Yes? Uh, I hate to bother you, but I'm a little confused. Uh, which way is the subway station? The uh, Lexington Avenue subway? Yes, that'll be all right. That's four blocks this way and one downtown. Oh, thanks. It's all right. I got sort of mixed up. Is um, that a local or, or an express station? A local. Which way are you going? To, to Brooklyn. Well, then take the local to Grand Central, then change for the express there. Oh, thanks. Ah. Uh... Yes? Do you smoke? Yes, ma'am, but uh, not on the job. Look, officer. What? There's just one or two cigarettes smoked out of this package. I'd like to sell it to you for a nickel. Uh, madam, I Please. Told... I've got ten cents. I need fifteen to ride the subway. Oh. Please take what's in the pack of cigarettes and, and give me a nickel. It's a bargain. It's really a bargain. Look, I don't want your cigarettes, lady. You can see I'm dressed all right. I'm on a tramp. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. That's right. It's really a long, sad story. I'd rather not go into it if you don't mind. You don't have to. You, uh, you want to borrow a nickel? I want to sell you my cigarette. That's not necessary. Here. You, uh, sure you have the dime? That's all I've got. Here you are. And here are your cigarettes. Oh, forget it. I, I can afford to be that generous. Where can I send it to you? Forget it. It's nothing. Well, look, I certainly appreciate it. You, you don't know how much I appreciate it. It's all right. I know how you feel. I don't know what to say. You, you see, I'm not a tramp. It's okay, lady. Oh, uh, I've got a job in this building. Now, you just walk over to Lexington Avenue in downtown one block. Well, thanks a lot. It's okay. I certainly appreciate it, really. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. He's on the second floor landing, passed out drunk, right outside of my door almost. Look, the downstairs door is locked. Can you press the buzzer? Uh, all right. J- just a second. Coming. Oh, 
get in here? I don't know. Well, don't worry about it. I'll take care of him. An old man like that will lose all his self-respect. Hey, Pop. Pop, come on. Wake up. Uh, what's the matter? Come on, Pop. Sit up. Uh, oh, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Ashamed uh, of yourself. That's it, Pop. That's it. What are you doing here? Oh, sleeping, that's all. Just sleeping. Look, don't you know better than to get drunk in other people's hallways? No, I'm not drunk. I was just sleeping. Look, Pop, you can kid yourself, but you can't kid me. No, I'm not drunk. I'm 78 years old. I never had a drink in my life. Then what were you doing here? What were you doing in this hallway? I was sleeping. Can you stand up? Of course I can stand up, but... The idea... Coming into a hallway and sleeping. Well, I wanted to sleep someplace. Don't you have a home? No, not anymore. You live someplace, Pop. Where? Well, if I lived someplace, I'd be there. I wouldn't be sleeping in the hallway. Why did you have to pick my hallway right outside of my door? I'm sorry. I didn't know it was your hallway. Any hallway had been good enough. What's your name, Pop? You called me Pop. Now, come on, will you? Pop is good enough. Look, old timer, it's 2 o'clock in the morning, and we're going to wake up the whole building. Now, what's your name, and where do you live? My name is Pop, and I don't live any place. Look, I can't stand here and waste time with you. I can take you down to the station house, and we'll get it settled there. He's not drunk. What do you want to do that for? Lady, you sent for the police. I thought he was drunk. You can take me to the station house if you want to. I don't care. Look, I want to be reasonable. Just tell me your name and where you live and what you were doing here. And we'll see if we can get the whole thing straightened out. You saw what I was doing here. I was sleeping. Well, what's your name? Pop. All right. You, uh, you have a phone, don't you, Mrs... Uh... Healer. Mrs. Bertha Healer. You have a phone? Uh, yes, I have a phone. We go inside so I can ring in. Uh, yes, we can go inside. But what are you going to do with him? He wasn't drunk. I, I was mistaken about that. Look, I don't know what to do with him. That's what I want to ring in for. Let them tell me. Patrolman Coley rang into the station house and explained the situation to Lieutenant Gorman, the desk officer on duty. He was instructed to bring the man to the station house, and for this purpose, an RMP car was sent by radio to the address. In the meantime, the fire in the 23rd precinct had been extinguished, and I returned to the 21st. It was 2.25 a.m. when I got out of the car, crossed the sidewalk, and walked up the three stone steps into the muster room of the precinct house. It is required by the manual of procedure that the commanding officer sign the blotter immediately upon leaving or entering the station house. And I went around the desk to comply. Hello, Captain. Sergeant. 21st Precinct, Sergeant Waters. Hello, Red. Captain. All right, hold on. Lieutenant. Yes. Gay Hill is ringing in. Report one male at Roseville Hospital in that auto wreck. Kessler went over in the ambulance. All right, tell him to resume patrol until Kessler rings in that he's ready to be picked up. Yes, sir. Okay, Red, it's all yours. Resume patrol. Big fire up there, Captain? Yeah, Red. Call, it uh, burned out this one building almost completely. Ran about 30 families out on the street. Lucky it's a warm night. Yeah. And uh, we had to reroute bridge traffic. Nobody hurt, was there? No, the alarm was turned in fast. Come on, Pop. Right up to the desk. Where? Where do you want me? Uh, right here, is all right? Here he is, Lieutenant. Hello, Captain. Coley? You still won't tell you his name, Coley? No, sir. Will you tell me, Pop? Well, if I wouldn't tell him, why should I tell you? What's this all about, Coley? Well, he was sleeping in the hallway, Captain. The lady who called in thought he was drunk. All right. Well, I wasn't drunk. I never had a drink in my life. Well, uh, what were you doing there, Pop? Sleeping. Now, look, Pop, we don't want to put you in jail. Let's get it straightened out. What's your name? Well, I'm not so sure jail would be so bad. At least there's a bed in jail. The floor in that hall is kind of hard. What about your family? What about them? Where are they? Can we get in touch with them? I'd, I'd rather go to jail. Well, it wouldn't be any problem. Sleeping in a hallway, that's disorderly conduct. Maybe you call it disorderly conduct. I was just sleeping because I was tired. How old are you? 78. I was 78 in March. Don't you have any money? Well, I've got three, four dollars. Look, don't you want to tell us your name? No, no, I thought I made that clear. Well, then, how can we help you out? I don't know that you're trying to help me. If you are trying, I don't know that I want your help. We are trying to help you. Well, maybe so, but I'm still not going to tell you my name. All right, Coley. Let's see what's in his pockets. 
Put your hands up on the rail, Pop. Suppose I don't want to let you search me. Oh, look, it's the law, Pop. We're required to search all prisoners. Well, if it's the law, I, I don't want to go against that. Oh, Lieutenant. Uh, yeah. I, it should... I think I saw an alarm yesterday. A missing persons report on a 78-year-old man. Did you? I think so. All well, right, go see if you can locate it. Yes, sir. Uh, right away, Cap. $3.88. Gee, I was pretty close about the money. I said between 3 and $4. A pipe, some tobacco. Uh, you're not going to take that pipe away from me. I've had that 16 years. You'll get it back, Pop. One key, a door key. Well, you can throw that away. I don't know why I'm carrying it around. Well, that's all. No identification, Coley? Not a thing, sir. Look inside your suit coat pocket, see if there's a label. Yes, sir. You won't find the thing now. There's no use looking. No, no label, Captain. Nothing here. I think I found the alarm, Captain. Now, come on, Pop. We don't want to waste any more time. Description fits. We should be out catching robbers. I'd better get that. Uh, excuse me, Captain. Yeah? Put me in jail if you want to. Pop, is your name John W. Lowfield? 21st Precinct, Sergeant Waters. Is it? We have a missing persons alarm for a John W. Lowfield, age 78 years old. Put out yesterday morning by his daughter, Mrs. Elizabeth Heppel, 42 West 79th Street. She, uh, she says he's missing from home and describes him as 5 feet 8 inches tall, 145 pounds, medium build, gray, almost white hair, glasses, wearing a... Brown suit, gray sweater. This suit's brown, isn't it? And the sweater's gray. Are you John W. Lowfield? The uh, description says he has a two-inch cut scar in the palm of his right hand. Let's see your right hand, Pop. He's got a cap. I'm not going back there now. There's no use you calling her. I'm not going back there. I, I'm, I'm just not. Why not? They don't want me. She's your daughter, isn't she? That doesn't make her want me. You got worried that you were missing. What did you do? Run away? No, I, I didn't run. I'm too old to run. I just walked. You are listening to 21st Precinct a factual account of the way police work in the world's largest city. If you were to sit down and list some of the rights and freedoms that you have, you would probably list the big things like, oh, freedom of speech, freedom of the press, freedom of religion, and others. Well, those are mighty important. But what about the little things? Things you don't think about much because you pretty well accept them as a matter of course, like choosing the business or profession you want to go into. You know, in some countries... You work at the job assigned to you with no free choice at all. Or like getting as much education as you can in schools that are open to all. In some countries, education is only for the privileged few. Or take a little thing like buying a house or renting an apartment for your family. There are places in this world where you live right where you're told. Have you ever thought about why you're allowed these free choices? Why you accept it as your right? It's because such free choices are guaranteed to you and your children and to generations in the future. To be exact, it's in Article 9 of our Bill of Rights. The men who wrote our Constitution and our Bill of Rights put this in just in case they forgot to mention something important in the other. It says, The enumeration in the Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. You get that? It's not left to Congress or the President or any special group. These rights belong to all of us, to the people. It's one of our freedoms. Now back to 21st Precinct and Captain Kennelly. Because John W. Lowfield, the 78-year-old man found sleeping in the hallway at 2 o'clock in the morning, was the subject of a missing persons alarm, he was not booked in on the charge of disorderly conduct. Instead, he was taken upstairs to the 21st Detective Squad to await disposition of the case. In the meantime, Lieutenant Gorman, the desk officer, informed the Manhattan Communications Bureau, which in turn put out a cancellation of the alarm on the teletype. According to established procedure, the desk officer in the 20th Precinct on the west side of Manhattan sent a patrolman to the residence of Mrs. Elizabeth Heppel, the daughter of John W. Lowfield, who reported him missing, to notify her that he'd been located. 
At 3.15 a.m., while I was out on patrol of the precinct, Detective Edward D. McInerney returned from his meal. Carrying a paper bag, he walked in the front door of the station house, through the back room, and up the stairs to the 21st Detective Squad. Here you are, Pop. Bought your container of coffee. And a Danish. Oh, uh, thanks. Thanks a lot. I didn't know how much sugar you wanted, so I brought three lumps. No, I don't use any sugar. Now, how much do I owe you? Oh, you don't owe me a thing. No, no, you're, you're not supposed to buy food for me now. Forget it. No, no, how, how much is it? Forget it, Pop. I've got money. <laughs> Save it for your old age. Well, thanks. Thanks a lot. Uh, excuse me. Yeah? Are you sure they notified my daughter? Well, that's what the desk officer says. Says you'll be here in a little while. I didn't want them to do that. Pop, that's life. We can't have things the way we want them all the time. Yeah, that's, that's life. Is that about me? Why? Is what you're writing there about me? Oh, no, Pop. It's about something else. It's a 61. Oh, uh, is that so? Yeah, it's a crime report. It's about a lady who left a package in the car and the door is unlocked. She came back. She was very surprised to find the package gone. Oh. Do you have to do that with every little thing? With every little thing, yeah. Uh-huh. This day and age, Sherlock Holmes make a lousy detective. He couldn't type. Hello, Ed. Lieutenant. Did Fitzpatrick ring in? No, sir. You were up early this morning, Lieutenant. Yeah. I hope it wasn't anything I did. No, it wasn't anything you did, Pop. Lieutenant King, Mr. John W. Lofi. Uh, how do you do, Mr. Lofield? He was the uh, subject of missing persons report. Daughter's on her way over here to get him. I didn't ask her to come. I don't want her to come. I wish they'd just take me back where they found me. That's all right, Pop. You'll be better off at home. If I had a home. Now look, Ed. Yes, sir. Who's on the job? Goldman, Vitali. Where are they? Out making an investigation. Have them ring in here. Yes, sir. I don't want her to come for me. 21st Precinct, Sergeant Waters. Uh, Sergeant, would you have CB put out a call for 419 to ring in, please? Okay. Thanks. What have you got hanging, Ed? Nothing much, Lieutenant. Just pop here. All right, Ed, you come with us. I'll take care of him downstairs. Now, no one has to take care of me. I can take care of myself. Hello, Matt. Captain. Well, at six o'clock, you said you were going home to get a good night's sleep. Yeah, that's what I planned, Captain. What's doing? Ed. Yes, sir? Go in my office and ring up Cassidy and DeLuca at their homes. Yes, sir. Tell them to meet us at the 44th squad at four o'clock. Yes, sir. Right away. Well, I just came up to see that you were getting taken care of, Mr. Lofield. Oh, I'm getting taken care of. I'm getting taken care of fine. Except you won't let me go. Well, your daughter will be here right away. That's the reason I want to go. Hmm. What's doing, man? Well, the two boys that stuck up the laundry on York Avenue last week, remember them? Yeah. Fitzpatrick got a line on them, traced them out to a flat up on the 44th. He's got the place planted. Rang in, rang into me at home. We're going up there to see if we can collar them. Well, are you sure they're the right ones? Well, according to Fitz, they are. He said he had some good information on them. He said he woke up the super of the building they're staying in. They answer the description of the boys we want. Well, it'll be a good collar. They're probably right for a lot more beside that laundry. Yes, sir, I know they are. Here, where can I put this? Right in the wastebasket there, Pop. 21st Squad, Lieutenant King. Where are you, Goldman? All right. Come on in here right away. We've got a job. I wanted to pay that detective for the coffee and the sweet roll, but he, he wouldn't take the money. I don't want anyone to pay for me out of their own pocket. <laughs> he comes from a rich family, Pop. Still, I wish he'd take the money. You're not going to leave home anymore, are you, Mr. Lowfield? All you do is wind up in the police station. Well, no, I haven't made up my mind that I'm going home. I, I don't think I am. Why did you leave in the first place? You're half my age, aren't you? Well, a little more than half. Everyone gets old, Pop. Old, yes. But old and in the way, not everyone. 
After Lieutenant King and his detectives left for the 44th Precinct, John W. Lowfield was brought downstairs where he was told to wait in the back room for the arrival of his daughter at the station house. I went into my office where I occupied myself reading and signing reports and communications which would be forwarded to division at the completion of the tour. At 3.40 a.m., the muster room was quiet except for an occasional call heard over the monitor of KEA 394, the police radio. The desk officer assigned to the 12 to 8 tour has the added job of classifying and filing various reports turned in during the preceding 24 hours, and Lieutenant Gorman was busy at this task. Sergeant Waters was at the telephone switchboard. Sergeant? Yes, sir. What time is Coley due to ring? 48, Lieutenant. When he rings, I want to talk to him. Yes, sir. Twenty-first precinct, Sergeant Waters. Well, there's nobody up in the detective, sir. They're all out on a job. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, hold on a second. I'll give you the 124 man. Maybe he can help you. Sergeant Waters, Fallon. A lieutenant from the Manhattan West Homicide Squad is ringing in for some information about an armed robbery we had in the 21st last week. Well, the detectives are all out. See if you can help them. Okay, hold on. Go ahead. Sergeant. Yes, sir. Give me a line on there, would you please? Yes, sir. Want some coffee, Lieutenant? Uh, no, not right now. Hello. Uh, Miss Reynolds Sturgis? Uh, this is Lieutenant Gorman of the 21st Precinct. Yes, that's right, the police department. We're holding a Joseph Gilliam here. Uh, yes, he's been arrested. Simple assault. He got in a fight in a bar and grill on 3rd Avenue. He asked that we notify you. He's being held in $200 bail. Yes, we'll accept the bail here. Well, you better get here before 8... Yeah, 8, 8 in the morning. He goes to court then. Okay. Okay, I'll tell him. Okay. You'll have to wait until the lieutenant gets off yeah. the phone, lady. I'll tell him. Oh, thank you. Bye. All right. You can talk to him now. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'm Miss Elizabeth Heppel. Oh, yes. I was notified my father was here. Oh, yes, ma'am. He's here. Where? Well, he's in the back room, but the captain wants to talk to you first. Is anything the matter? No, he just wants to talk to you. Uh, cross the room and in that door. All right, thank you. Just knock on the door. Thank you. Yes, come in. Oh, come in, please. Thank you. That's all right. Just leave it open. I'm Miss Heppel. Oh, yes. Uh, won't you sit down? Where's my father? He's in the back. We've been worried. We've been worried to death. He left the house yesterday morning before breakfast. We didn't know what happened to him. We didn't hear from him all day. We thought he was sick or hurt in an accident or something. He's 78 years old, you know. Yes, I know. We uh, found him sleeping in a hallway. In a hallway? That's right. It doesn't sound like my father. It is. I don't understand him. He doesn't want to go back. He doesn't? No. Well, he has to come back. There's no place else for him to go. Why did he leave? You know? He's been living with us eight years since my mother died. He's never done this before, never. Well, he must have had a pretty good reason. Especially if he doesn't want to go back. I don't understand him. Do you want him back? Well, yes, of course we want him back. Of course we do. Where else is he going to go? After all, he's my father. Why did he leave? It was my fault, I guess. My fault, my husband. Yes? We had an argument the other night. About him? No, no, not the way it started anyway. It was about something I served for dinner, meatloaf. My husband doesn't like meatloaf, not the way I fixed it. Well, he got started on the meatloaf right at the dinner table. Was your father there? And we were all eating together. My husband, myself, my father, and my two sons. One thing led to another, and Harry and I... Oh, Harry, that's my husband. We started screaming at each other. He said he pays the bills. All he gets is meatloaf that he doesn't even like. And 
The first thing you know, we were screaming back and forth about my father, and he was sitting right there. Guess we didn't even realize it. Harry says he's been living with us all these years, and we've been supporting him, and my sister does nothing about it. You know how those things lead one to the other. Yes, I know. Harry really likes my father. They get along swell. They, they play chess. They watch the ball games together. They, they, they really get along swell. Sure, he didn't mean anything. Uh, it must have sounded like he meant something. Yes, it did. Yes, it sounded like I meant something, too. I said I'd been trying to get my sister to take him for a while. Got so we didn't even realize he was sitting there listening. I guess it just got beyond control. We were both sorry right away, right away. We said so. We told him. He said, that's all right. He went in his room. We thought everything was okay. Except when we woke up in the morning, he was gone. I see. Well, he'd never done that before. Like I said, we didn't know what to do, so... I waited a couple of hours until after lunch. He didn't show up then. I knew he didn't take any of his clothes except what he wore. I started to get worried. Called Harry at his office, and he told me to call the police, and that's what I did. You're sure you want him to come home? Of course I'm sure. He's my father. He seems determined not to go. Well, where is he? Can I talk to him? Yes. Oh, we'll have to go in the back. All right. I don't know where he'd go if he doesn't come home. He has no place to go. My sister's out in Ohio. He's got no money. No money at all except what we give him. I, I don't know how I can explain to him what happened. You understand, don't you, Captain? Yes, I understand. In back, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. He slept in a hallway tonight. He must have slept in another one last night. He must have, yes. Right in here. Huh. Oh, Papa. I'm sorry to cause you more trouble, Elizabeth. But I'm sorry you had to get up in the middle of the night. It's all right, Papa. Why'd you run away? Oh, because I didn't want to be any more trouble. You're no trouble, Papa. Yes, I am. An old man. An old man with no money, living in his daughter's house, making more work. Causing arguments with her husband. That, that, that's trouble. That's a lot of trouble. You know, we were sorry we had the argument. We told you. Right away, we told you that. Well, because you told me, that doesn't make me less trouble. Please come home. We want you to come home. Harry and me and the boys, we all want you to come home. Well, where's Harry? Why didn't he come and tell me himself? Well, one of us had to stay with the boys. Well, he should have come and told me himself. He's sorry. You know he's sorry. No, I, I don't, Elizabeth. Not for sure. I can only hope that he is. He is, believe me. Well, all right. If you want me... We want you. Captain, thank you. It's all right, Mr. Lothian. Come on, Papa. We'll get a taxi cab. A taxi cab? I guess they really want me back, Captain. Thanks, Cap. Yes, sir. I guess they do, Mr. Lowfield. 21st Precinct, Sergeant Waters. He caught a thief or he saw a thief? Yeah. Yeah. Where is it? And oh. so it goes, around the clock, through the week, every day, every year. A police precinct in the city of New York is a flesh-and-blood merry-go-round. Anyone can catch the brass ring. Or the brass ring can catch anyone. 